Welcome back to Howl's TV Live. I'm Rick Spence, and with me today is Stacy Munich with Stacy Munich Interiors, doing great work out of Chicago and Palm Springs. And she's been kind enough to show us her own home in beautiful Palm Springs. Now, I understand this is a William Cody home, one of the fathers of modernist movement there. And now you have the privilege of bringing it back to life with an incredible modern style. Tell me a little bit about this home. I found this home, I feel like I got really lucky. Uh, nestled right against the mountain and close to the tennis club. It had gone through kind of a bad 80s remodel with lots of glass block and curved walls. I just reimagined it and tried to bring it back to something that William Cody would have been very proud of. Let's start in your living room kitchen area and tell me what you did here to kind of open this up and bring it back to life. First thing I wanted to do was take out that wall that divided the kitchen from the living space, but we had to re-engineer the home and add a steel I-beam. And I wanted it to be an architectural element as opposed to trying to hide it. And I like how you sort of did something with the wine fridge to sort of embrace that. So if you look around the perimeter of the kitchen, there really are no appliances above eye level that you can see. However, the wine refrigerator is a dominant feature. I love to cook. I like to drink wine. And I think a kitchen should look like a kitchen. The verticality of the hardware on the refrigerator, pantry, and wine fridge complements that vertical beam too. I wanted the kitchen to feel more like furniture. The desert's quite dry, so I debated between laminate and wood cabinetry, and I went with laminate. People can't believe it's not wood. It looks great. <laughs> <It'll be> great. Yeah. <laughs> and I like to live in a soft, neutral palette, but bring in some color. And so the vertical installation of that picket tile, blues and whites and grays, it brings the eye up, plays along nicely with the eye beam and also the hardware. The kitchen had an eight foot ceiling and we were able to restructure and move around some of the ductwork to allow us to raise the ceiling in the kitchen, which was a huge game changer and made the space feel so much bigger. And I also did a lot with lighting and illuminating above the cabinets as well as below the cabinets and lighting around the perimeter of the home also makes the ceilings feel much higher and taller. Smaller cans, are those like two, four inch cans yes. up there? Yes, yes, they're petite and they are mudded into the ceiling. You don't actually see the housing. And I worked with a lighting designer too. It makes the world of difference. Tell me about your countertop material and your nice little bar stools. You tucked them away nice and clean, like little emerald jewels almost underneath the, the bar top there. They are, they are. I do like emeralds. <laughs> it's my birthstone. Oh, there um, you go. <laughs> so I wanted super clean countertops, no veining. I went with a white style stone, antibacterial, cleans really well. And because my floors are terrazzo, there was movement and interest in the floors. There's definitely movement and interest in the cabinets and also the backsplash. So the counters needed to be very minimal and very clean. And the peninsula is actually quite wide because the side of the peninsula that's in the living room, it also functions as a bar. So there's a bar refrigerator on that side and then a cabinet that opens up with barware and glassware. And then there's some more storage underneath where the counter stools are. That's a really great idea. And I think a lot of islands could benefit from a little bit more storage. And you don't really need that much more space, eight to 10 inches. It makes a big difference. So functional and beautiful. Tell me more about the floors. Is the terrazzo floor through the entire home now? Yes, it's inside and outside and they're 33 inch squares and they're actually porcelain to resemble terrazzo. And it's a lot easier to install. It's pretty amazing. Let's talk about the living space a little bit here. Tell me a little bit more about the materials in that space. And then also what you did with those little accent chairs around the fireplace. Those little chairs are antiques that I found many, many years ago in Chicago and had them painted black and then did these brass nail heads. There's black in different parts of the home to bring the eye to those spaces purposely. So even the black and white art, Tina Turner photograph, she's one of my all time favorites. 
definitely an inspiration. What's love got to do with it? All right. <laughs> So much. Are you going to break into it for me? Come on, I'm break it down. I want to hear it. <laughs> Take you back to my Michigan State days and lip syncing. <laughs> but the fireplace, I painted the inside black as well. I decided to go with a white ledger stone, add texture and interest, a little bit of shimmer from the stone, but allow my artwork to really take center stage. And then the sofa is a really soft kind of cotton linen-y blend. And it's also very easy to clean. And those are slip covers. So that sofa has also moved with me. And, a, and those sofas in like four different homes. And I just keep having new slip covers made. Those are original Knoll chairs mid-century, modern, you know, iconic design. And I did those in a gorgeous brown. They work beautifully with gray and blue and green. And I think those are two of my favorite pieces in the space. Those are really beautiful. What about the little artwork to the left of the fireplace? So that is actually um, a collage and done by Stephen Rudin in New York City. It's a really cool piece. It, it really brings you in. People always walk up to it and look in and they're so intrigued by that piece. Tina on the right and you have that on the left. And totally different, right? But right? they work well together. It totally works. Amazing. Yeah. I see you're running the business out of the dining area. So I had just moved into our new design studio here in Palm Springs. And then I was there for about three weeks and then shelter in place order was initiated and we moved our office home. The artwork, that's a pretty nice piece there as well. What's that one? It's gorgeous. That's on silk and it is done by a ho an artist in Hawaii named Kudra Clover. She works with biomorphic shapes and images mm. found in nature. And I just fell in love with that piece. I love that. That's awesome. Tell me about the little partition you put up between the dining area and your foyer. I had that piece made and it's a macrame piece, hung a drapery rod on the ceiling and voila, I had a really nice room divider and it also adds texture and warmth because it's soft. Wherever I could bring softness, I did so. Even in my chandelier over the dining room table, that's a ruched fabric and that adds another element of softness too. All right, so let's go into the master suite. Another beautiful cozy space you've made personal in so many ways. You've got this beautiful, amazing bathroom and tub. And where do we start with this? The bathroom. You notice I use the same cabinetry throughout the whole home to create a sense of continuity. And the countertops in both bathrooms are the same, but I went with um, a two inch mitered edge in the master bath to give it a chunkier, beefier look. The vanity in the master bath is all drawers. I wanted that to read and feel more like a dresser. The medicine cabinets are awesome too because they just look like mirrors and then they've got electricity inside so you can hide your electric toothbrush and keep the counter less cluttered. You'll see that yellow poof in the middle of the bathroom. You could actually hang out in that room if you'd like and I do spend some time there. I love a good soaking tub. And that's a really nice stone tub, so it maintains the heat for a long time. I added the gorgeous mosaic tile. Each one of those fans is an individual tile. Really is art in itself. That shower is a steam shower. It's really nice to just be able to sit on that bench and take in some steam, especially in this dry heat. Well, that is a great space. Let's go into the bedroom. Okay. Part of the suite here. Tell me what you did here and about some of your special pieces. I have new things in there and also really old pieces of furniture like those two swivel chairs. Those were my parents from the 70s. The nightstand to the right of the bed, that was my Nana's. The bed was brand new and I, I just love that. It's like all rope and wood. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Another antique from Chicago that has lived in many homes with me and moved around a lot. It's an apothecary cabinet a little damaged on one of the sides. It did not fare well on this cross-country move. I love how you're combining things like antiques you've had a while, brand new materials, bringing in artistry makes it so beautiful. Thanks, Rick. Let's go into this amazing guest space. Just love the colors in this space. So on the walls, it, and actually both bedroom suites, um, I treated both the walls in a really pretty grass cloth. It's a woven by Maya Romanoff and it's 
just super, super subtle. I think the color is called Pina Colada, actually. Mm. Perfect. And it, <laughs> it is. <laughs> and it's kind of creamy and white and a little bit of tan, very subtle, but something to add warmth and another layer of texture. And then behind the beds, those are laser cut wood panels, just kind of a, a cool headboard without it really feeling like a headboard and making it feel more like a piece of art, yet not taking away from the art that was on the walls, too. Is this like a mother daughter thing, this gold sort of dreamy? My mom did that piece. Ah. That piece. Yeah, I love that piece. That's beautiful. It's like a dream sequence of some sort there. And it's monochromatic. Yeah. And it's brown and it just i think it works perfectly in that room what's the other one with the blue background what's that one that one's super geometric that's um done by an artist in new york named iris kufert i just love the juxtaposition between her you know vibrant angular geometric shapes against my mom's oil painting which is you know so serene and subtle they both make you happy when you look at them absolutely and look at that view out the window that's just crazy. Why would crazy. you why would you put glass block in there? Come on. I guess privacy, but you know, those shades keep everything private and I did battery operated solar shades and there's two levels and two layers. So one is a blackout shade and then the other shade is a black solar shade. That's another trick that I learned when I got here to the desert. Um, when you do solar shades, a lot of people think white. You know, my walls are white. I want to have white solar shades. When you use black solar shades, you can see outside so much better and so much more clearly. And they don't get yellow from the sun. And of course, in Palm Springs, you have to embrace the outdoor living aspect. And you created a whole outdoor living area here. Almost like a whole nother apartment, really. There's a little private area off the master bedroom with a chaise lounge and a nice oversized chair for reading. Created a fire pit in the sand with some kind of cool modern anoradet chairs. And then right off of the living room, there's sitting areas outside. And of course, there's the dining area with the umbrella to shade us from the sun. Beautiful, beautiful home. Congratulations on that. And thank you for taking the time with us, Stacy. Thank you for having me. Absolutely great stuff. And we'll be in touch. Thank you. I see you. Okay, bye-bye.